Chapter 25. My True Face. 11 p.m. When Hope killed one half of Sciadist, the other half went into shock, displacing his psionic barrier. Super Mystic Arlo clutched Sciadist by the skull, squeezing his head like a zit. Arlo's fingers tore Sciadist's head off and threw it against the rigid pavement as a police officer shot its brains out, making certain that Sciadist was dead. Dark Sparrow made her way through town in Maxwell's Red Hummer. The downpour of rain had gotten heavier all throughout Nankin City. Arriving at Nankin CBD, Dark Sparrow saw Super Mystic Arlo backed up by police officers fighting against four elvish scions and two huge horned monsters. One of the horned monsters grabbed Super Mystic Arlo, squeezing him with both hands. Trinity channeled her mana into four bloodstones. I summon Garudigan, Rapscallion Devil, Sapphire, and Grandfather Hawken, Trinity shouted, raising her hands. Six distant purple portals opened, gyrating clockwise, sending boulders to Trinity's position, along with three more purple portals. Grey boulders formed together, creating Garudigan, the Earth Elemental Elder. Garudigan, I order you to fight that monster first, Trinity said, pointing toward the monster that was squeezing Super Mystic Arlo. All right. Everyone else, at all costs fight defensively. We don't want the death toll to rise. Super Mystic Arlo telepathically spoke to Dark Sparrow and Trinity. Dark Sparrow and Trinity, this is Arlo speaking. Yes, I can hear you, they each said telepathically. I forgot to mention that whenever you use a bloodstone, it comes at a cost of blood. That is where your divine mana nodes regenerate any blood you've lost. I will keep that in mind next time I summon an army, Trinity shouted, distracting their enemy, who were confused by Trinity's random shouting. I need you both to go onto the penthouse floor of the Selim Hotel and look for room 2020. The other half of me is there protecting a young girl named Madison. My other half is Scarlet from Dr. Tracy Genelan's class, the girl you saw earlier. I live on Earth as two people protecting friends. I owe life debts to their children. Please keep my real identity clear of Madison. Arlo screamed in intense pain as his ascension violently exploded, scorching the horned monster's claws. Arlo fell to the ground then ran toward Dark Sparrow and Trinity. Maxwell shouted in the Mandarin tongue, casting flames shaped like a snake coiling around the huge horned monster that were extinguished by the rain. Elizabeth took cover behind cars, waiting to fire Dark Sparrow's Beretta, as two elvish scions used their telekinesis to throw debris. What exactly is the plan? Why do you live a triple life, Arlo? I said life debts. Madison has instructions to hand over her ancestors' diamonds. Trinity, you have hidden powers beyond those of even our queen, and one more component is in the process of arriving. Time is short. Please follow my directive, Arlo pleaded. How much are you paying me to do this mission, Sergio? I have done my fair share of charity for one day, Dark Sparrow demanded, firing rounds and killing an elvish scion. I promise to keep all your secrets, give you a clean slate, and make you more famous than Jane Turner. Dark Sparrow will be forever remembered as an honorable hero, not a vigilante. Go now. I have everything somewhat under control out here, Arlo ordered as he ascended into Superption Arlo. Superption Arlo punched the horned monster directly through its left eye, thereby preventing the Selim Hotel from taking any further collateral damage. Dark Sparrow and Trinity ran inside the Selim Hotel and saw loads of blue slime residue all around. Dark Sparrow pulled out her Beretta with an ultraviolet light attachment, laser pointer, and snail attachment for extra ammunition. Dark Sparrow, this slime is proof that magic and psionics are not meant for Earth. Me sorry, sweeties. We wish not to create war, so we sit here for me barrister to take us back to Albach Court to face Queen Vedic's wise judgment. Sitting on the lobby sofas were the bartender and six Rubavale inmates, all restrained by handcuffs. We want respect of me beasts, but they do not approve of war. Sure, the plan to evacuate Nankin City and lower the number of fatalities has been effective. However, I, Roberto, me is sorry. 
me very sorry. Grinning a horrible gingivitous smile, he raised his eyebrows and winked flirtatiously at Trinity. Trinity sweated, ignoring Roberto, using her psionic X-ray vision to observe her surroundings. Electricity is still down, so no elevator. Only twenty floors of stairs. Me suggest stairs. Too much me slime and there me slime everywhere. Scion mana from that tower has leaked a nasty flood. Trinity's eyes widened as she tried to ignore Roberto's seductive charms. Swiftly ascending flight after flight of stairs, Trinity tried not to touch the slimy handrails. Slime feels like rotten raw egg yolks. Dark Sparrow sneered. Once she and Trinity had reached floor 15, five women from Dark Sparrow's high school approached. Are you jonkers from freshman year? We are all sincerely sorry for joking about Ken's death. The queen bee lowered her head. Dark Sparrow cringed. Get out of our way. The queen bee followed. What was your name again? It starts with an M or N, I think. Dark Sparrow slapped the queen bee in the face, shouting, I said get out of our way. Running past the women, Dark Sparrow headed up more flights of stairs, finally taking a much-needed rest on the 20th floor. To our left is room 2020. Eric Fitzgerald owned the first corner penthouse, apartment 2001. The second corner penthouse apartment, 2008, belonged to Mayor Jefferson, and his mother owned apartment 2009. Apartment 2010, 2011, and 2012 each had a sold sticker placed diagonally across the door. The third corner penthouse, apartment 2013, read Munson. Janet Munson lives in the third corner penthouse apartment. Dark Sparrow laughed, sliding Dr. Tracy Jenalan's pamphlet on relationships beneath her door. Trinity ignored Dark Sparrow's unusual gesture and sly grin. Continuing forward, Dark Sparrow and Trinity saw apartment doors on both sides of the hallway and a glass window from ceiling to floor at the end of the corridor. The door to apartment 2014 had a selfie photo of Peter Richardson and other actors from his drama group. The plaque on apartment 2015 read, Maggie, 2016 read, Childus, and 2017 read, Me Crib. I wonder if this one is where Roberto the creepy bartender lives. Dark Sparrow said. Apartment 2018 and 2019 each had the NEV insignia placed over the door. Finally, on the fourth corner penthouse apartment, was a plaque reading, 2020. Arlo disguised as Scarlet opened the door. Quick, come in. Sitting in a wheelchair inside a wide spacious lounge was a preteen girl covered in third-degree burns. She was wearing a bandana that covered her bald scalp. This must be Madison. Poor girl has only partial lips. Wheeling over, Madison handed Trinity her family diamonds. Princess, this belonged to my mother. She called it her envy diamond necklace. I have photos of my family that have more sentimental to me than this necklace does. Arlo telepathically spoke to Dark Sparrow using Scarlet's voice. Her entire family were killed by Zonal Giovanni. Madison believes it was an electrical fire. Her sister Scarlet is the only other survivor. I live a double life protecting this beautiful girl. Dark Sparrow gave Madison a handshake. What is your name, sweetie? Madison Jonkers, officer. Dark Sparrow had a vision rush into her mind. In it she was witnessing an event from the first-person point of view. Madison's mother is dragged inside Eric Fitzgerald's walk-in freezer as Zonal Giovanni's hand locks the door with a steel pipe. Suddenly, inside the abandoned warehouse, Dark Sparrow sees that her father is tied to a chair in a dark room with only a dim light flickering. Speaking in an Italian accent, Giovanni says, Mr. Jonkers, you have been quite an inconvenience to me. Mr. Jonkers laughs. All right, men, tie him up. Snickering, Giovanni places his hand on Mr. Jonkers's chest. Sad attempt to distract me, Mr. Jonkers. I have a bomb strapped to me. If I die, this building goes down with me. Suddenly, Mr. Jonkers falls to the floor, 
where he sees a woman whose face is covered by a balaclava beating Zonal Giovanni with a plank of wood. How do you know that was me trying to save my father? Dark Sparrow shouted out loud as Trinity and Madison stared, confused. From Zonal Giovanni's first-person perspective, Cameron Banks shoots Mr. Jonkers several times in the back of his head. He hears younger Dark Sparrow running away, avoiding being shot as Mr. Jonkers explodes, sending an inferno of flames throughout the warehouse. The visual experience came to an end as Dark Sparrow clenched her fists. Arlo said telepathically, Zonal and Cameron were not after your stepfather. They were after your mother, your father, and all Jonker's descendants, including you, for foiling their plans. I was watching Zonal as one of my other personae, Major Brett Thorne, that night exactly seven years ago, trying to piece all the evidence together. It was only when reading Cameron's mind that I took a statement from him regarding your strangulation. That is why I manipulated everyone into granting you bail. Also, because Madison needs her big sister. That big sister is you, Dark Sparrow. I realized earlier today that it was Cameron Banks who killed your father. Dark Sparrow, we are your half-blooded sisters, the last of the Jonkers family. Dark Sparrow sat on the floor, looking at the two girls. My half-sisters from Dad's second marriage. Cameron must die. Is Cameron still on the Tyson River Bridge? Scarlet handed Dark Sparrow a garnet and emerald ring. Ring of haste, cheaply made but only imbued with the best haste spell from barrister Arlo Sergio. It has passive ability and therefore is always active. And it self-regenerates 24-7. You won't know yourself with this magical item. Oh, and slime won't be a problem. Scarlet smiled. Look after each other. And, Madison, you have a loving big sister in Scarlet, Dark Sparrow said, confused. She ran out of the apartment, taking the emergency fire escape. Holding onto the edge, she dropped and then held onto each consecutive floor, dropping down and defensively rolling, then running toward Maxwell. Maxwell, Jane is being held hostage by Cameron Banks on the first bridge. Maxwell's eyes widened in surprise. Take me to her. Maxwell grabbed Dark Sparrow's hands. Allow me to cast my synergist spells on you. Elizabeth pistol whipped the last elvish scion, wounding him. She made a citizen's arrest, assisted by two police officers. Relax, Dark Sparrow. My spells flow through you, Maxwell said. Dark Sparrow opened her eyes, suddenly realizing that they were levitating twenty feet above the ground. Pressing against Maxwell's chest, she placed her feet on his. Relax, sweetheart. Let's go quickly. Now I will instruct you on the way, for your first flying lesson. A romantic third first date, excluding the coffee. Maxwell smiled, taking to arcane flight, leading Dark Sparrow. Back on the ground, Trinity gave Arlo the diamonds. Very good, Trinity. Only one more component remains. It should be here soon. Arlo patted Trinity's shoulder. Underneath the two bridges, Troy Marino was giving directives to Nankin emergency volunteers workers and the police officers who were working between three boats. When its tentacle resurfaces, cut diagonally downward. Then, captains, move your boat out of its way. Troy was speaking of a highly unusual freshwater species of squid that Cameron recently summoned. Both NEV boats need to drain the ruby, but we cannot stay still long enough to use the vacuum heat pipe cannon. The bow of Troy's boat was being pulled from underneath. Hold on to something, Troy ordered. Tipping backward, he climbed along the railings to rebalance the boat. A police officer broke a lock, opening a steel chest, and grabbed a harpoon gun, which he loaded with six individual harpoons. Troy, can we pull up beside and hand you one of these? Has anyone on our boat used one of these weapons or had shooting experience? The only police officer on Troy's boat raised his hand. All Nankin City police are trained to use these. Pulling in closer, Troy tried to close the gap between boats. I am not close enough to hand you my weapon while that squid is underneath. Troy ripped his thick shirt in two, holding it out, ready to catch. 
Okay, Mr. Marino, on one. Ready? Three, two, one. Throwing a harpoon gun, Troy caught his shirt. Moving the harpoon downward, he placed it carefully on deck. Here you go, officer. Troy gracefully handed over the harpoon gun. The boat was rocked by a nasty thud, shaking everyone. One man fell into the river. The gargantuan squid's tentacle dragged him to the river's depth. R.I.P., friend. Now six of my fellow N.E.V. have died tonight. Rain was falling heavy, making it nearly impossible for Dark Sparrow and Maxwell to see the other side of the bridge. Landing on one side of the first bridge, Dark Sparrow and Maxwell took cover behind a van. Using a mirror to peer behind her, Dark Sparrow saw at least 30 inmates from Rubervale Prison and 10 Ruby cult-like mystics. She watched as Cameron ordered six inmates carrying light arms to move forward. Damn it, I gave Elizabeth my other Beretta, Dark Sparrow thought. Maxwell pulled out a sheet of paper from his pocket. I have a plan, Dark Sparrow. I need you to remain safe and give me 20 minutes to make my plan work. From a well-covered vantage point between ten vehicles to provide cover, Dark Sparrow unloaded an entire clip of 15 plus 50 caliber bullets, dropping six inmates dead and wounding more. Save your ammo. You might accidentally hit Jane. You are too trigger-happy. Give me twenty minutes. I need to go. And trust in my spell, Maxwell explained confidently. Dark Sparrow forced an exchange of saliva, Kissing Maxwell before he had a chance to stand taking advantage of the moment, Maxwell embraced Dark Sparrow, appreciating the rain soaking the shirt over her supple breasts as he sensually touched her. Three men approached, taking cover from the rain beneath a rolled-out top attached to a caravan. Sorry to cockblock, but it is almost midnight, and Cameron's gang has been keeping us at bay by firing warning shots. One of the men revealed himself as Jane Turner. Good for you, Dad. Maxwell straightened up his shirt collar. Jane, what's your mother's name? Maxwell sneered. Dark Sparrow made haste, stepping through and pistol whipping the imposter's nose as he morphed back into a man. The other two men dove flat on the road, placing their hands above their heads. Miranda writes. Maxwell asked, confused. How did you know it wasn't Jane? Dark Sparrow asked, shocked. Jane placed a finger in her mouth, pretending to barf as she does whenever witnessing any romantic interaction. I know my daughter well, Maxwell said proudly. We came to warn you that almost everyone broke out of prison, or else they would have faced certain death, one of the prisoners said. Dark Sparrow came to a realization. Cameron has blackmailed all prisoners to stand stronger in numbers, when actually they don't want to fight. Maxwell placed six scrolls onto the ground, channeling arcane mana as the Chinese inscription vanished. He spoke in tongues, opening a red portal gyrating clockwise. Keep safe, girlfriend, and enjoy my shadow clone show. You three are coming with me. He stepped through the red portal as shadow clones of military police marched forward, dispersing because of the impact of the heavy rain. Some plan for intimidation, Dark Sparrow mumbled to herself. Cameron pointed. That is Maxwell's signature spell. Go and bring the resistance to bow at my feet. Two men approached, banging their fists along the parked cars. One was a man nicknamed Scarchin because of the wound he sustained in a sawmill accident. The other was a man with tribal tattoos over his face and ugly one-inch piercing rings in his earlobes and through his cheeks. Dark Sparrow hastily reloaded, checking her Beretta clip and snail attachment. She had 65 bullets. She fired one shot toward Tattoo Face and two shots that hit Scar Chin's thigh. Moving farther back, she took cover behind some small cars and fired four more warning shots. Both men drew two handguns each, rushing forward with their guns blazing. Bullets passed by. Dark Sparrow could see each bullet moving 20% slower because she was wearing the ring of haste. I will rush with my guns blazing too. She headed toward a police vehicle with her right arm extended, firing 13 shots, 11 of which ricocheted. 
Two of them met their mark on Scar Chin's scar and forehead. Dark Sparrow rolled her body over the hood of the police vehicle, hastily firing ten more bullets while Tattoo Face took cover. I didn't want to kill, but they gave me no choice. How about you join our covenant, seeing as midnight is upon us? The more able we are to prove something to the beast, the better. Emerging, Tattoo Face saw that Dark Sparrow was no longer behind the police vehicle. She was behind him, pressing a shotgun to the base of his skull. Call me Dark Sparrow, or I will blow your bloody brains out. Tattoo Face carefully placed his hands on his head. Dark Sparrow. Your name is Dark Sparrow. You've been reading too many comics, kid. Dark Sparrow forced Tattoo Face to walk in closer toward Cameron and his group. Everyone, on your bum. And send Jane Turner toward me, or I'll put more holes in his head, Dark Sparrow demanded calmly. Cameron stepped out in front of his cult, acting as a direct shield. Then he moved forward two more steps, holding his arms out. Stay right there, Cameron Banks, or I will kill him and then you. No time for a coffee. Doctor. Time to prepare for when the others need us. Hope directed Dr. Tracy Genelan to grab supplies, preparing for the unexpected. It is all right, David. You're the luckiest four-year-old I know to have so much family around, Hope encouraged. David sat in the staff room with Anna Chase. Meanwhile, Dr. Axel Chase, Scott Chase, and Grandpa Mervyn prepared the vacuum heat pipe cannon attached to the old NEV fire truck. I will drain the Topaz Mana Tower while you two use the control panel, Dr. Chase directed.